But essentially, we're going to hit a lot on distracted driving because that's a big cause of the number one cause of accidents today, not the number one cause of fatalities. But we're going to be hitting on that a lot and talk a little bit about how these things fit into your policies and procedures um, at the workplace. Who all drove? Who all drove here? Pretty much everybody drove a road. How many? How many of you uh, drove your personal vehicles? Okay, a lot. Do you do you all have pool vehicles or do you just use those? Okay, some drove per pool vehicles, rental cars. Yeah. Okay. All right. So last year, um, basically, I want to see the ones that were here last year again. Okay, so last year, do you remember, he took you through kind of a process, and it was a grading process. You had 20 variables. We'll go through them really quickly. Uh, 10 points apiece, and you came out with a number. Who, who had, uh, does anybody remember what their number was? What's your name, sir? Donnie. Donnie, do you remember what your number is, or what, what the, what the? I, um, I don't remember the exact number, yeah. but I did identify that it had some key points that, us as an agency did not think about. Okay, good. We were able to take that back to the table and say, hey, we need to shore up our policies and procedures. Okay. To include the right. Excellent, excellent. That's what I wanted to hear. Anybody else? Anyone else? No one else? So everybody else was perfect, right? Okay. So there's basically three, um, three things I didn't do this. All right. So there's three areas we're going to look at. We're going to look at manage operations and safety, okay? So I'm not going to go through these uh, individually, you know, one by one because we went over them last year. But, um, you know, these are the main, the main things with the management, from written program to safety coordinator, management involvement. Anybody know a program that works that doesn't have management involvement? Right? Top management involvement? They don't work, do they? Uh, driver responsibility supervision and safety rules and procedures. And of course, orientation and training. The safety controls, got specifications and selection. Um, anybody here manage the fleet? You have the fleet, Donnie does. You have a fleet manager, so you have specific parameters around what you, how you choose fleet that you guys are gonna use, and, right? right? Driver evaluations. What kind of evaluations you all do? Anyone? Someone other than Donnie. I'm going to pick if you don't holler at me. Okay, MVRs. Anything else? Any on road? Any physical evaluations? No? No? Okay. What about you? Okay. The safety department had to give the six rules. Yeah. So, the five rules, they had to come through it, they shouldn't have to do it. So, uh, if there was any kind of pullover uh, or any incident that occurred, that's when we had to go back and retrain and do another evaluation. Right. And so, did you guys have a pretty good program, pretty good record there? We went from the uh, original guys to because we had to drive and roll over the town. Uh huh. And once, we, once that occurred, the Swiss system training came in, and our incidents went through the zero. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's good. Of course, record keeping, investigation, which uh, Paul went through earlier today, and other policies. Okay. Different operations. Now, do you do you maintain your vehicles on site or off site? Off site. So you use a third party. Okay. Do you guys have auditing in place? How do you make sure they do a good job? Actually. Um we have a small team, three of us, that actually, on an annual basis, usually when it's managers or something come to town for conferences, mm -hmm. we'll actually do an uh, annual audit and inspection. Yeah, well, good. We, we audit uh, the vehicle's condition, odometer readings, general condition of the vehicle, make sure the fuel card and the toll tag all match, and test drive the vehicle, and actually try to get vehicles repaired that need repaired while the people are in their conference, and then at the end of the day, Friday, they pick their vehicles up and drive back home and repair vehicles. That's good, that's good. So what we did was, there's 20, 20 of these things, and we, you, you graded yourself, and you got somewhere between 95 or zero and, and 200. 
Excellent was 175. I would assume that you guys are in the excellent category. You've really thought it out. But if you you can still do that. I think you have this presentation and kind of feel where you're at. And if you want to know something more about those uh, areas that maybe you feel like you're um, not up to expectation or is a little bit substandard, then you can um, you know you can work on those. You can call us, uh, call your co your your friends and and those people. So this case. Um, so. Let's get into some of the causes and some of the exposure. So, what you when you're when you're developing a policy, you want it to hit the areas where you're having issues, where there's trends, um, and based around your operations as well, right? So, we've already gone over the distracted driving is is really number one, right? It's the number one cause. I find it interesting in California. You you all have HOV lanes here, right? You know, if if I get caught in a without you know driving illegal in the HOV lane that has absolutely no safety significance at all, um, my fine is anywhere from about 350 and up. Okay, if I get caught texting, I think it's a 149 dollar fine or some ridiculous level. But yet yeah, this is the leading cause of claim. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, Distracted driving today, especially with teens, and you're going to see it is, it, it's really taken things off the chart, and it really does require a lot of focus. The other thing that I find interesting about um, is the technology advances are, are continuing, right? Who has a Fitbit here or something like that? Fitbit, I have an eye watch. Does it buzz every time you, you've done something? You, you know, or, or maybe you have a meeting that buzzes or a bell goes off or what have you, right? What do you do initially when it... Yeah, how many of you do that when you're driving, right? I, I didn't really... My wife talked me into getting this thing. And so, you know, I had to train myself to not do that when I'm driving because it would go off or, or on this is really great. You can do a one-word text back. You know, or you can write a text on it, or read an email or a text on it. So it, it was just another thing that you had to manage and that would distract you from driving. So you know, little things that just that uh, that kind of fall into that category. Technology is continuing to advance that that can take our our mind away from the tasks that we're we're doing when we're operating a vehicle. Speeding's number two, or and um, of course driving while impaired. I'll go a little bit about on some statistics about driving while impaired too, because that's changing as well. Um, it's changed with even medical marijuana and recreational use marijuana, and how that's impact uh, loss statistics in different states. Um, because uh, Courtney proofread this thing and she missed it, and it's really no. Yeah, it was. There's another blunder in here that I didn't catch. I caught a few of them, but um, I apologize for that. So, all right. Uh, in in your operations, do y'all have all these things in there? You have all these types of vehicles. You have staffs, volunteers. You have volunteers driving. None at all. Out there, over in the corner. Do you guys have any volunteers? All oh, their heads are down. Do you guys have volunteers driving at all? No? <laughs> Voluntold. Okay, what about student? So student volunteers don't drive. Do they drive golf carts? Yes? Or low, or low speed vehicles? Okay, all right. Um, and then there's passengers in public. Do you, any, you, you transport people that aren't employees or and buses, charter buses. Do you do you ever do any third part third use third parties for any of those oh, yeah. activities? Oh yeah. Okay. The only time we do any kind of passengers that are employees is if they have specific business. Okay. Yeah. So that that requires um, the third parties require another another element because a lot of times those charter companies they're really small mom and top pop things. Uh, I was when I was doing some of the research on this. There was a bus accident, and uh, the liability on that was 135 million dollars from the, the the accident that that happened. 135 million dollars, not to mention the loss of life. 
And, and it always goes back to those issues of maintenance, records, all the record keeping, all the issues that can increase your liability. So if they're driving under you and you haven't done the right you know, risk management processes or you've overlooked something, you know, the liability is going to come back and fall on, on the state. I don't know how that applies with the tort, the tort issues that, that uh, were talked about earlier. So something to think about. Um, Texas is number 10, worth driving state. So I'll admit right here, anybody here been to Stillwater to go watch your Cowboys beat up on your Texas teams? No? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're in Stillwater, did you go by the campus fire station? That's where I lived for a year and a half when I went to school there. And we were on the second, on the second floor, and when it got icy and and uh, when it got icy out, we used to all run to the second floor because it's right on, if you've ever been to Stillwater, the Hideaway Pizza, okay, across the street, campus fire station, and there's a turn. And so we used to call it Okies on Ice, is what <laughs> was our reference, because they'd be spinning all over. So I understand why Oklahoma's fifth, because I, I, got, to, I got to witness it when I was there in, in college. But... Um, 12.8 fatalities per 100,000 in Texas. Tenth worst. Texting increases the potential for an accident by about 23%. So leading cause, of, uh, vehicle death is leading cause between 16 and 25. And smartphone owners are four times likely, more likely to, to get in an accident. Um, you know, in Colorado, when they, when they first went to medical marijuana use, it increased the fatality rate by 48%. And then when they, when they uh, passed it you know, for recreational use, it went up another 41%. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand there's, there's uh, advocates within Texas that are pushing for recreational marijuana. In California, we just passed it this year, amongst some other states. Um, Louisiana the poor. So, so there's some things to think about here too. You know, there's other impairment issues too that we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about. Here's, I've got a couple, a few case studies here that we'll talk about. Or not necessarily case studies, but just some, some, er, some uh, losses I look up. So eight killed and 44 injured in South Texas charter bus accident. One dead, seven injured after and full of cheer. This was the Texas one, the, the second one here. Do you guys remember that one? You remember that one? Um, and South Te Texas prison bus crash and sends 16 to the hospital. Uh, you know, in every one of those, and I didn't read any accident investigations, but when you're reading it, you can look at the variables that were, were uh, talked about. So, uh, you know, the time, of, the time of day, wet, foggy conditions, uh, the road conditions, maintenance violations. And, and in one of them, I don't recall which one, I think it was in the uh, charter bus, they had previously taken that bus out of service. So going back to where you're doing the third party, what are you doing to make sure that these people are, you know, on the, on the, up, on the up and front, so. California, we had a gal. She's a young, a teenage gal from Northern California. A year to the day, she got in an accident or uh, got a ticket texting, got an accident texting, or I mean, she, excuse me, on her cell phone. A year to that day, she's killed. She, and she said, well, I'm not gonna talk on the phone anymore, so I guess she decided to text. You know, the teenagers, even if you don't have, uh, if you're not employing teenagers, they may be driving in your areas too, right? So maybe uh, uh, policing that, that process as well. This, unfortunately, my wife witnessed this one. This is in near my house. I don't have a pen. But this is a speeding issue. So here's the intersection here. Probably can't see that. A motorcycle, two motorcyclists. The first one, the guy was going well over 80 miles an hour. This, this uh, there, a person was pulling out of our club here 
which is probably about, well, it's easily less than 100 yards from this intersection. <coughs> and so he blew through the intersection, uh, green light, hit the, hit the uh, lady pulling out, burst into flames immediately. His brother was right behind him, run, run the red light. Fortunately, he didn't get hit, but he was, he was dead on the scene. <coughs> um, but he was, you know, speeding excessively. So how, fa how far do you go in a, in, a, in a second when you're traveling 60 miles an hour? Anybody know that? It's 88 feet. 88 feet per second. So if that was less than 100 yards, he had no time to even react when that person pulled out. Okay. The um, distracted driving, 38% are in their 20. That's, that's another one of the typos. That's not 20%. <laughs> Average time is five seconds. So we just said 88 feet per second. Five seconds, that's over 500 feet. That's, a, that's how far. That's more than, well, that's further than, uh, you know, one and one third uh, football field. That's a long ways. That seems like a long time to be looking at your phone, right? Or whatever it is that you're distracted. It's responsible for about 25% of the deaths. Third behind alcohol and speed. Um, and there's basically three forms of distracted. It's cognitive, visual, and uh, physical, okay? So it's basically anything that's gonna take your hands off the wheel. <coughs> Does everybody here have a, a, a policy around distracted driving? Do you know? Over there, you in the purple? You don't know? Sure. Not sure? No? Did you drive here today? I did. You did? Okay. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. You guys are you guys are quiet over there. Okay. So what should go in a policy and who should be involved in it? Everyone who drives, right, should be in it. So it should. Uh, doesn't matter if you're driving your personal vehicle, owned by the organization, leased or rented. Um, whether family members drive a vehicle, do you have a policy that allows a family member when you have an assigned vehicle to drive it? No just the individual it's assigned to? Anyone over there have any of those policies? Does anyone have a company vehicle that's assigned them, you know, pretty much 100%? It's all pool vehicles? No? Okay. Okay, the policy should include such things as eating and drinking. How many times have we been um, driving along and you spill something in your lap. Soda, coffee, <coughs> drop something on the mat. You know, so even eating and drinking. My last employer that I worked at, I was in a business development role and one of the, the products that we provided was called Smart Drive. You all know what that is? It's a video that goes in your vehicle and so it, it, it interacts and, and if you do anything like stop or do any abrupt moves within three you know, there's three pri pri uh, parameters that it used. It would it would trigger a video, and it would take video. So if you hit somebody, or if you stop quickly, or if you turn quickly, or if you accelerated too fast. And um, I went to learn a little bit more about the product. So I go there, and in every one of the videos I saw of this, the the individual's music was just blaring in the cab. Now I don't think that was necessarily coincidental. It's a form of distraction, right? Um, so I even have a client where they rip the they rip the radios out of the the trucks. It's a trash company, so they they can't listen to the radio while they drive. So, so basically, the policy should be obviously written. I'm a I'm a firm believer in zero tolerance policies for distracted driving, or for at least for PED or personal electronic device use. Um, if you're caught, no moss, you're done. Uh, just because of the, you know, the significance of it. So just like other, other policies, basically um, you want to list all the distractions that could, could
could be uh, possible for all vehicles and job titles. Doesn't matter if you're CEO or, or you know, the just walked on today as a, a laborer. Part of the vehicle safety program needs to be trained on and, and uh, reviewed and signed by all employees. So you should go back and see if you guys have a policy. Yeah. There's, probably, there's a very strong possibility we do, but I don't travel enough to know mm -hmm. that I'm not looking at it. Okay. And you drove your personal vehicle anyway. Um, have they ever checked your MVR? I'm sure. They, you're sure? I'm sure. Okay. It's, it's on our job description that they, cook, that they can. So I'm okay, sure. so you think they have, but it never... Right. Trust me, my, our organization isn't perfect either. Okay, so... All right, so here's some statistics around speeding. Again, 88 feet per second at 60, so you're going how far? Two, uh, 30, if you took five seconds, being the average like we talked about, 30 miles per hour, you're going about 220 feet. The reaction time, did he not say one and a quarter seconds today? Did I hear that, Paul? One and a half. He said one and a half is the reaction time. What I read was, um, was faster than that, but if you take one and a half, I'm sure his is more accurate. Um, but if you take that, that's a long ways. Think about how just one second, how far you go before you even react. So, so again, just to bring home the point that the distracted driving and how far you go at those speeds, it's crazy, you know. Impaired driving, of course we have alcohol and marijuana and all the things listed around, you know, what it causes. We're pretty, everybody's pretty familiar with that, right? But what about other things like cough medicine or um, other types of drug use, prescription use? You know, prescription drug uh, abuse is on the rise and, and really, who works in work on here? So, have, since we've talked before. <laughs> So, in any of your um, in any of your claims files, have you have you noticed? I mean, do you guys have concerns with opiate use and stuff? And it, and it's been increasing. It's been a trend for a while now, right? Um, so so you have some of that. I was talking to my sister this week, and we were talking about someone we both know, um, pretty close. And this person was on Xanax. The doctor cut him off, so she reverted to Benadryl and Nyquil. And this is an adult. And not really, I know, know the person very well. Um, you know, not someone that is prone to doing, you know, to drinking in excess or taking any kind of, you know, so it's not something where, hey, I'm just looking for another high. You know, just trying to sleep. So it's something to consider, you know, because we know that 18% or alcohol is 18% of all, all, you know, uh, motor vehicle deaths in the nation, um, and 15 million people abuse prescription drugs. So again, you want to, especially in safety sensitive positions, you want to make sure that, that um, you know, you're including that as well. Okay, written programs. ANSI publishes a standard for written programs. Um, responsibility and accountability. Doesn't, some of the problems, the gaps, doesn't include um, industry-specific requirements. I do a lot of risk management assessments, and two of the things that I, I, I identify are the lack of uh, management responsibility and communication is one of the main things as to why programs fail and one of the areas you can improve. Uh, it's, it's interesting how you can have something as far as a customer service policy and everybody in the company understands it, but when it comes to a safety policy, it doesn't get that kind of, that kind of focus. So um, those are some of the areas that you need to make sure that you address. Driver and selection and management. Why would driver selection be so key? Someone back there. Yeah. You don't want an air hit in there. You don't want somebody that's driving and playing the radio super loud and banging down the road. Yeah. The other thing too is what happens after you hire them? They're your they're your problem, right? Right. Does it have you all heard of Heinrich's accident theory? The accident triangle? 
You guys not, not heard of that? Heinrich. It's a, a psychologist. I don't know if I can do this without everybody seeing. But basically, it was more for industrial accidents, but it applies across the board. And it talks about, it talks about your, you know, your lower level accidents up to a fatality up here. And his, his ratio was uh, 600 near miss accidents for every one fatality. And then there's different things in here. So what, what largely causes these are what? behaviors, right? So if the numbers are right, you're going to have more unsafe behaviors than you are accidents that result from unsafe behaviors, correct? So those behaviors are driven by people, um, what I call that kind of support it as underlying factors. And an underlying factor is all those characteristics that you would hire somebody into a position that um, some are going to be good traits and some of them are going to be bad. So really in your HR policy, po processes, if you have those positions, so you have a safety sensitive position or you have someone that's going to drive, you may want to do things and do, uh, because that, you don't want to hire somebody in that just is, doesn't have the skill set or the mindset to be operating in the w manner of which you want them to operate uh, for, on your organ for your organization, correct? So you can do that through psychological testing, through the MVR, uh, looking for MVRs, um, background testing. Do you ride? Do you ride with them like you did with the Smith set, uh, system? You know, doing all these things so that when you hire them, you're doing your best because once you got them, you got them. You're gonna hire a client, right? Um, so. Uh, background checks are, are really key because if you can weed it out there, you don't have the problem of claim in the future. I think one of the things about driving is is that it, it doesn't matter whether I'm driving on or off duty. My driving habits don't really change too much, especially since I'm not specifically supervised. You know, when I'm in the car, of course, when my wife's there, that's a little different. Or my kids are there, you know, Dad, why didn't you use your blinker? So, um, you know, so those characteristics you pull on, so it's better to you find out early on, because once you get them, it's a little bit late. Okay. So, qualifications, we went through this, criminal records, um, social media. Do you, do you use social media in your? in your uh, hiring procedures, vetting people, that's being used more and more today. Yeah. In California, we have something called the California Pool Program. And they have in New York, they have, uh, I forgot what, it's, uh, forgot what it's called, essentially the same thing. And it's a registry that you sign people up for. So you sign them on this pool program, and what it does is it it notifies you if there's any activity on your record. They don't have anything like this in Texas at, at this point, I don't think. I looked up this uh, law, and it looks like there, uh, there's a bill in that they're looking at currently. And I don't know what happened since December 2015, to be honest with you. Has anyone heard of this at all? No? So, but it's a great tool, but you don't want to rely on it, is, is the point. You still want to manage a process. So driver training, you all said that you didn't do this on a regular basis or an ongoing basis. I would suggest it's something that you, you should do right along, maybe even informally, because people act maybe a little different if they know that, that you're in the car there with them for, the same, for, for that reason. Uh, pre-inspections. Of all the people that drove, who, who did a pre-inspection of their vehicle? You, someone over here drove like 170 miles. You and I think 100 from Houston. Was it you? Yeah. So I mean, it doesn't have to. You don't have to bring out the check sheet, right? But you made sure there's gas and oil is good, and you probably relatively know how good your tires are and that kind of thing of the vehicle. Yes. Yeah. Well, so. I the car, so I can go walk around with it privately. Okay. <laughs> And he told you it wasn't bigger than what, a quarter or whatever it is they carry that piece of paper. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I look at the tire. Yeah. No, I didn't do it under the hood. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. But on the tractor, if you got a if you got a tractor, right? You got to do a pre and post inspection. Are you doing those? Or with those units? Who has those? No. Okay. All right. We're about done here. So. Again, the program should be written, communicated, and signed by everyone. Uh, contains distracted driving and controlled substances policies. Personal use policy. You all have personal use policies. They're not able to. What about on rental cars and, and alcohol use after when they're out of town? What's that? Same rules apply. <coughs> okay. Um, <laughs> driver management training. Inspection and reviewed and update on a on a regular basis. How long you guys have a really good program? How how often do you um, do you review everything and kind of update? It's supposed to be annual. We do it about every eighteen months. About every eighteen months. Okay, that's good. But you can see like things like with technology. Um, we're talking about some of the other stuff that are on the books, like the marijuana thing, uh, which is going to be difficult because at some point that's going to be challenged with regard to an employer having, uh, let's say, terminating someone that tests positive, yet it's legal to be recreational, used recreationally. So that's going to happen, I think, anyway. Um, but So you need to make sure that you're addressing this stuff in your policies. Okay, so again, just uh, review, man this is basically a repeat of the first one here. So, um, and technology. Anybody use Waze? I hate that app. I, 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 I'm surprised there hasn't been um, any kind of lawsuit with that. Because what is it? it now, you, maybe you guys don't have the same issues we do in California driving. But what's it do? It tells you wants to know your position, and you're looking at it to report when there's an accident. <laughs> your passenger is supposed to do it. Yeah, because we all have passengers, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I just think, again, I think it's another thing to take in. I mean, Google Maps, um, I, I, I don't know how we got by with Thomas Guides all the time. So, But with the what we have now. And then self-driving cars, you know, that, that technology is coming out too. So they already have self-parked cars, right? Anyone have those? <laughs> All right. So here's some some references for you. I think they're listed in in your uh, materials that you guys got. Does anybody have any questions? 